What is going on my fellow survivors and welcome to Enshrouded. Today I am going to go over the revamped Juggernaut build. Now, some of the comments in the last Juggernaut build video had said that some of the points I placed were in bugged areas, which was correct. Some comments stated that the Ranger Tree that we had specced into does not affect melee. That is indeed not correct. And I am going to show that the Ranger Tree does affect the melee build. Now, I will say that our weapons are going to stay the same. I did make one change to the boots, and this is thanks to Glitch's new video. We swapped over for the Trailblazer boots, which is the Hunter boots. Now, if you are wanting to min-max your character, I suggest going over to Glitches and checking out his Warrior build. Myself, I will never say that it is the best build. It is min-maxed, whatever. My goal with Crystallinity is to give people the ability to play the game the way they enjoy playing the game and enjoying all the content without having to grind for eight hours and hope an RNG Jesus works in their favor. A lot of the stuff that I have is easy to obtain via the, hallowed, the new Hallowed Halls. Now, coming in and looking at base attributes, everything is seven. 862 health, 240 mana, 420 stamina. The big one to note, okay, foe type damage. The only one we have an increase to is the plus 4% melee, and that is from our Wolf Fang Gloves, because I still run one-handed sword and board. Our crit chance is 10 and 16, which is stack 226. We have 25 block, 178 parry, 376 resistance, physical resistance, and 197 magical. Now, I have zero points placed at this point. I have 149 available. When you go to face the dragon, you should have 145 available, as four are still locked behind Death Shroud until after he is defeated. Now, we are going to start off with the same thing. Dexterity, Marksman. These two don't really matter. We're going to go into Counter Battery, which is plus 15% damage to ranged enemies. This stacks with your melee damage. 30% against flying enemies. The dragon is classed as a flying enemy. Now, I'm going to take Endurance, Dexterity, Stam Regen, Crit Chance, and Crit Damage, as again, that stacks with your melee. Before we place any more points, if we come back over, our critical strike chance went up to 15% because we have the plus five off the Ranger node. We have 30% damage to flying, 15 to range, because it's based on the foe type, not the weapon type. One node we took did 10% extra damage with bows. I don't care. We're not going to rely on our, that heavily on our bow during our primary combat phases. It was needed to get to the upper tiers to get the additional crit chance. Going back in, we are once again Giant Slayer Hook and Grounding Hook. I still feel that those two need to be flipped around because as a melee build, I don't need to grapple myself to the big mob. I'm in its face already. Okay, then we're coming over with Merciless Attack and Power Parry. Grab the Constitution node into Shiny Plank. Physical Armor grants 10% more physical resistance. We are still picking up the Evasion Attack and the Battle Heal. That is still our lifeblood. Now, one thing that I still do differently than Glitches, I'm taking up Arcane Deflection 
to get over to blink and emergency blink. That still breaks the stun. Now, I am not picking up the intelligence nodes as we are not going into healer, healer 2, or the water auras. These two were passively healing us for 20 damage a second in combat, out of combat. The thing of it is, is when you're not in combat, you have a natural regeneration. When you are in combat, this build is healing you so much that you really didn't need it. Back over into the tank tree, we are picking up heavy plates, which is going to increase an additional 10%. Pick up that constitution node. We are picking up tower. We are ignoring warden as to me, there's just not enough magical things for us to warrant going down that side of the tree. Pick up the strength node. That strength node, earth aura which is a group damage reduction, including yourself. I am very well aware that thick skin is bugged. Flame level at eight is only giving three points. Still gonna take it because that's 150 points of health. Pick up that constitution node. We are skipping over purification. We are coming over and picking up this constitution node. We are going to grab the Warrior's Path, which is going to increase our melee damage by 10%. I'm going to grab that Strength Node. Now, this point here, if you are min-maxing, again, glitches. Me personally, I pick up 30% for all damage types. That is cutting, blunt, and piercing. We are going to pick up Veteran. When attacking with a melee weapon, your critical hit chance is increased by 10%. That constitution node, that strength node, swift blades, and that constitution. Now, we have dropped off Nemesis and Arch Nemesis. These two work outside of the Hallowed Halls. Inside the Hallowed Halls, it doesn't work. And being that the Hallowed Halls is really the only group style type content that you should be pulling that many mobs, it's not worth the eight points it takes to get into it. We are going to pick up Feast as that bug has been fixed. It does increase the health gained by food by an additional 15%. Now we are going into Strength, Heavy Handed, again. When they're blocking, I want to fill that stun bar. More strength. End of the constitution. Now, if you are going to main a two-handed weapon, I say go relentless. If you are going sword and board, go breach. End of that constitution. We are hit, picking up the heavy specialization. So we can get back to this node, Blood Rage. It was pointed out to me in, in the other video comments that this works with every melee weapon. So when an enemy is killed within 10 meters with a melee weapon, the damage done with melee weapons is increased by 20% for 10 seconds. During the dragon fight, you can kill a Shroud Hawk and then have 10 seconds, the final Shroud Hawk. And if you are able to get the dragon stunned, Within that 10 seconds and get over and deal damage to him, you have a small window of extra damage. But it is actually really great for the Hallowed Halls. We are skipping Steadfast as, again, one durability to a weapon isn't enough. They, they need to adjust the durability loss of weapons. So we're going to pick up that Strength Node. We're going to pick up the Jump Attack. And again with the Double Jump. We're going to grab that Strength Node, Vigorous Deflection, Finesse, Blood Warrior will replenish 10% of your health with your Merciless Attack. But we want that Constitution, that Constitution, and that Strength Node. Now, if you notice, I am sitting at 10 available skill points. 
it is at this point where I'm kind of scratching my head going, hmm, where do I put these? I could go into Jump Attack 2, which is good if you are doing a two-handed melee build. Because you are doing 20% weapon damage if you are actually double jumping. You can go into Dex, Airborne, and Updraft. You'll have to keep in mind that you'll not be able to get Updraft until after the Dragon Fight. Because you will be one point short. You can get Jump Attack 2 after the Dragon Fight. And still have one more point to put wherever. Personally, I don't ever use Updraft. I can get where I need to go either by landing fairly short or just go from the proper point. The, um, you, you need extra stamina to continue your glide anyways, so I don't see the point in an updraft. I am, however, going to take the Dex and Airborne. That's going to bring us down to 7. Now, someone had said in the last video that I should have Jump Attack 2. I'm leery of it because there's been multiple times where I've gone and gotten knocked out of my jump. So I'm actually going to pick up Runner and leave it set there with the five points still available. Now, if we come back in, bear in mind I am unbuffed, as in I have no food buff, no nothing. So we are sitting at 15, 12 health, 440 stamina. 20 constitution, 7 spirit, 9 endurance, 19 strength, 11 dex, and 7 intelligence. Our damage is 169% critical strike damage. Make sure I've actually got, yep, I've got my weapon properly attached. We're running right around, what is that, 41% critical strike chance. Increases our damage between three types, melee, ranged, and flying. We've got a boost to weapon damage with our gloves, and of course that node gave plus 10%. If I come over to protection, we're sitting at 25, 178, 367, 197. That theoretically did not change. Now, if I go to my food, we are going to be using the milkshake and the open sandwich. There's one, two, three. If I come back over and I look, we are now up to 1,862 hit points. 240 mana, 490 stamina. Still at a 41% chance on the critical. Now, if any of you have actually watched Glitch's video, you will be saying, well, his build has higher stats. That is correct, because in my personal world, my flame level is 7. Because I have not beaten the dragon in my personal world. However, if I go over to Crystal Entities in Shrouded Server, I can show you the jump that you're going to get with a flame level of 8. Flame level of 8 cannot be achieved until after you defeat the dragon. So give me a second, and I'll meet you over there. Alright, here I am on the Crystal Envy server. When I bring up my attributes, you can see flame level of 8 bumps our health to 1,912. Our stamina goes to 500. Hundred. Now, if I was able to get the Ring of the Ancients, a second Ring of the Ancients, that would put our actual health at 1,962, which is insane. Our stam regeneration delay is zero. We're still getting a passive health regen of seven. Now, the other thing to note is I have not even taken the elixir so if I take the elixir and then I come over here 
I believe up here is the Vuka Shrine that increases our damage. Yes. I gotta pick this up. Put that down. Grab the buff. Now, if I come over to the damage and have the right weapon attached, we are still sitting at a 41%, 169. Health is up to 1,937 with 500 stamina. Melee damage is 170. So it does give a very slight increase. So with this new build, I'm going to jump up to the dragon base and we are going to go fight the dragon. All right, I actually had to come back over to my personal game. The flame level is seven, so our stats are reduced. The reason I came back is I attempted it on the CEG server and during the first stun cycle, he glitched out and did not take back off. So it was literally a one cycle stun and he was dead. And there you have it, in 3 minutes and 12 seconds, we have a downed dragon. That is the new Juggernaut build. Everything on my personal is set to default. I will show you that right now. If I go play, private, personal, nothing has changed. No edits, no jumps, no nothing. Three minutes, 15 seconds with a new Juggernaut build. It is truly insane. Yes, it still requires some health pots, but moving the points out of 
the dead nodes into the better nodes, increases your overall damage, allows you to get them down as long as you follow the mechanics. Until next time, guys, I hope to see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.